Which graphics card should you buy for your next gaming PC is becoming a more relevant question by the day, as GPU stock and availability continues to improve and prices start to fall, with so many options on the market from AMD and Nvidia that just weren't around 12 or 18 months ago, it can be difficult to decide. Thankfully in this video we're going to compare all of the latest GPUs from Team Green and Team Red, and tell you which one is the best choice for your build in 2022. Let's do this. Let's begin by taking a quick look at the current state of the GPU market and what options are actually available. On the Nvidia side of things, we've got everything from the new 3050 and 3060, right through the 70, 80 and the 90 range as well. Nvidia have also released uh, a lineup of TI or TIE cards. These ones aren't intended to be replacements for the non-TI variants, just a slight performance boost of the same GPU chip. This allows NVIDIA to essentially monetize the lower yields that they'll get during production and also gives you, the consumer, some more options. So win-win all around. On the AMD side of things, you've then got everything from the new 6500 XT, a card you shouldn't really buy but we'll come on to that very shortly, through to the 6600, 700, 800 and the 900. To confuse matters, some of these cards have an XT designation at the end. This is somewhat similar to NVIDIA's TI design, it just means it's a slightly beefed up version of the non-XT card if the non-XT card exists, because not all of the XTs have non-XTs, whereas all of the TIs have non-TIs on the NVIDIA side. What we're going to do, we'll jump through some graphs that look at performance, but we'll try and line these up now so you can see the comparative AMD rivals to the NVIDIA counterparts, and so on and so forth. Let's look at our first graph then, where we've basically gone and compared pretty much all of these cards in Apex Legends at 1080p high settings. If you see odd cards missing here and there, it's because we've tested those at higher resolutions, which we will come on to. Now as you can see from this graph, all the results seem to fit in the right places, with the more expensive cards delivering more frame rate. On the bottom end, we've got Nvidia's new 3050, which has given us similar results to the last gen 2060, but perhaps slightly lower. The 3050 is more of a replacement for a 1660 Super uh, card anyway. And then moving through the lineup, we've got a 3060 and 6600 XT. The six series of cards are pretty on par. One thing I've found with the AMD cards is that they tend to be slightly better in terms of straight rasterization. That means the straight frame rate you're able to achieve, while the Nvidia cards boast better support for the likes of ray tracing and DLSS, features which you may choose to value more than a slightly more raw performance on the AMD side. Moving up the pecking order, the 6800 slots in between Nvidia's 3070 and 3070 Ti, while the Nvidia card tops the order with its 3080. The results you'll see at 1080p are very much a case of diminishing returns. The really high-end cards aren't going to give you all that much more frame rate, as other factors like memory and CPU begin to bottleneck, meaning if 1080p gaming is what you're after, I wouldn't personally go any higher than a 3060 Ti or a 6600 XT as any higher end cards are better suited for 1440p or 4K gaming. A great example of this is with the next graph, Apex Legends when tested at 1440p high settings. Here the 3050 still provides actually some decent gaming results that are very playable, but those higher end cards like the 3080, 70Ti and 80Ti really do produce dividends. The 3080Ti interestingly beats out AMD 6900XT, making what is Nvidia's not quite highest end card better than AMD's highest end card. You'll see once again the 6800 and 6800 XT slot in between the 3070 and 3080, but the differential between the cards is not a great deal, maybe 10% if that. The 3070 Ti, quite interestingly, is actually level pegging with the 3080, perhaps indicating more of a CPU bottleneck here, and showing the similarities between these two GPUs. You might notice that there's no 6500 XT on the list. Why is that? Well, the 6500 XT, AMD's latest budget release, is simply a card that we can't recommend. The press and the reviews around this card have been dire due to the GPU's lack of video memory, ruling it out of our testing on these grounds. We have got a unit in the office, we just don't think it's worth any of you guys considering when the 3050 can be found for another $80 and is actually in stock at a wide range of retailers. It's a much better buy. We next looked at Fortnite, and here there's some interesting results if you're not familiar with the way Fortnite works, but results that don't surprise me a great deal. All of the cards are pretty much in the right place, the 6600 XT and all the Nvidia cards slot nicely into an order, 
getting better as they get more expensive. But then AMD comes in like a train with the 6800, 800 XT and 6900 XT beating out the rest of the field. That's right, a 6500 $600 AMD GPU beats out a $1,000 Nvidia GPU when it comes to Fortnite. There's something about the way AMD cards work, and it's a similar story with AMD's APU where we've seen good results in Fortnite 2, when testing at 1080p, in this case, high settings. Continuing the theme of 1080p testing, we next looked at Call of Duty's Warzone, where here the 3050 performed okay, giving us 83 frames per second, while our other cards, 2060 and upwards, provided much better results. Once again here, we tested up to the 3070, as in my opinion, anything higher than this is better suited to 1440p gaming, which we'll come on to shortly. The AMD cards held their own with the 6600 XT, beating out the 3060 once again, though this card is more expensive, and the 6700 XT surpassing the 60 Ti. At 1440p and 4K, the landscape changes slightly, and cards like the 3050, 60, and even the 60 Ti show that perhaps they're out of their depth. When gaming at 4K and the likes of Forza Horizon 5, as you can see now, the 30, 70 tier and above are where you want to head. And it is generally a case of the more money you spend, the better performance you get. There are instances in our testing where AMD has excelled itself. Take that Fortnite example, beating out the Nvidia field quite decisively. But in my opinion, there's just too much inconsistency when it comes to these frame rates for AMD at the moment to be the preferable option. AMD have made great headway when it comes to GPUs in the last 12 or 18 months putting themselves firmly in the mix where they just weren't prior to that. But for me, they simply lag a little bit too far behind on ray tracing and DLSS. DLSS is an area they are making great gains though with their new resolution scaler, which I'm sure will come into play with the 7000 tier of GPUs. If you're looking for a great budget card, then the 3050 is absolutely where I would look. And with pricing and availability improving, it's a great option. The 3060 Ti is also a great bet, especially over the 3060, as it's one instance where the Ti card really provides a nice performance upside. When it comes to Team Red, the 6600 XT is, in my opinion, AMD's best GPU, while the 6700 XT is also worth considering. The 3080 and 3080 Ti from Nvidia hold the spot in my book for the best card to buy if budget's not really too much of a concern, while AMD's 6900 XT is worth considering if you want all the performance of the 3080, but with more video memory for video editing, rendering, or non-gaming applications. Overall, Nvidia I think is still the best bet when it comes to picking up a GPU in 2022, though AMD's 6600 XT is certainly a dark horse worth considering, and their resurgence when it comes to the GPU market should most certainly not go unnoticed. And that pretty much wraps it up for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a big old like rating, get subscribed, thanks for tuning in, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.